I want to turn to what President Biden spent much of his week focused on. He hit the road pitching the urgency of his economic plans. I'm not ready to have another period where America has another infrastructure month and doesn't change a damn thing. Tuesday, the president also set a new goal for fighting the pandemic. He is aiming to have 70 percent of Americans vaccinated with at least one shot by July 4th. Biden urged Americans not to let politics get in the way of getting a vaccine. I want to be clear. I've been saying this a long time, but I really believe this is not a Democrat or a Republican issue. While we may not always agree on everything, this is one thing people across the political spectrum can't agree on. But Republicans, according to polling, are still among one of the most vaccine-hesitant groups in the country. And a number of conservative voices have been spreading disinformation about the vaccines. Jake, I want to come to you. The new jobs report fell well below expectations. White House aides tell me this underscores the importance of passing President Biden's plans. How might this latest report push the Dems to go it alone? Yeah, so, Yamiche, it's a good point. So, Democrats have been toying because Joe Biden wants them to with negotiating, as Dan alluded to earlier, with Republicans over this package. I think when Congress comes back into session next week, they are going to be uh, a lot less interested in waiting for Republicans to figure out if they want to come along and negotiate this package. I've talked to Democratic aides and lawmakers all day. They believe time is of the essence. Maybe not the entire package, but I have to imagine that they're going to need to, they're going to want to pass something quickly. The, the general gist is Democrats feel like Republicans, you know, go halfway down the road and then eventually decide that they don't want to negotiate. They think they're not going to be able to do it this time. That's one way I would say this is going to uh, impact legislating. The, the second way is I think Democrats are going to want to go big. I really do. I don't know if it's going to be $4 trillion, but I don't think some sort of 600 to $700 billion plan is going to suffice for, for most Democrats, especially in the, in the wake of this, of this job report, which, by the way, I had, and I'm sure you guys did too, I had White House sources telling me yesterday they expected a 700,000 to a million job number, which would, give, uh, would have given Joe Biden 2 million jobs in his first 100 days. That didn't happen. Um, so it was a big surprise in the West Wing, big surprise in the White House. Congress is going to need to respond with speed. Joe Biden's going to have people at the White House next week. I have to imagine that uh, things are going to go a little bit quicker now. Um, Dan, I want to come to you. How is all this traveling that President Biden's doing, how might it help speed things along? Jake is saying things need to happen fast because of this surprising jobs report. Well, it helps at the margins, but I think that the real question is going to be, is there, is there room for a real compromise between the White House and the president and Senate uh, Republicans? Um, I'm told there will be a meeting next Thursday um, at the White House with uh, Senator Shelley Moore Capito. Um, I think that the White House at that point will begin to see whether how serious Republicans are about really giving ground and then how serious he is about meeting them closer to where they might want to want to be. So I think until we, I mean, I, I would say a week from today, we may have a much better idea of whether um, what I would call a hard infrastructure bill, uh, which is just to say the kind of roads, bridges, that sort of thing, uh, is possible. Um, and at that point, if it's not possible, then he's going to have to make a decision about what to do. Um. Weijia, you're obviously at the White House covering all of this. I wanted to ask you a bit about the jobs report, but there's also, of course, these big COVID goals. And the Biden administration is going to have to navigate access and vaccine hesitancy. What are you hearing about all this? So before I get into that, I was so excited to start tonight <laughs> that I forgot to say again. This is why I love you. Because this is literally why. I love I was like, you. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is an amazing night, and I'm so happy for you. you um, know. But, <laughs> <laughs> so yes, as you know, um, from the very beginning, the president said that you cannot separate these two crises. So mm -hmm. you have the the you know virus, and you have the economy, and um, so that's why he is making this huge push by July 4th to vaccinate 70% um, of the adult population. And what we saw today was a, a clear example of why, because, um, you know, the White House has said that the reason why these job numbers were not where they had anticipated them to be is because people still have that fear factor about going into work. 
into a crowded workspace, especially into a restaurant or a bar, which is an industry where we're seeing a shortage of labor mm -hmm. and employers trying to get more people. And so that's why he's trying to get the numbers up. But it is very hard, as you mentioned, because um, the, the hesitancy still exists. And even though access is a huge problem that they're tackling with more walk-in clinics, with more mobile units, um, I think it's really going to be the holdouts that make a big difference. And the president said over time, the spokespeople will be more granular into these local communities to try to change people's minds. But the worry is that people have already made up their minds. And mm. if they've decided they're not going to get it, they're not going to get it. Erin, mm -hmm. I want to come to you. I was in St. Louis this week, talked to a lot of people who were hesitant about the vaccine. It surprised me a bit. Um, you have been writing a, bo a, a bunch about vaccine hesitancy and access. Talk about that and also talk about racial inequalities and how that factors into all this. Absolutely. Uh, you know, so racial equity has been, you know, is, is, is a cornerstone of, of this administration, something that they said they were going to prioritize uh, in, in this administration. And even though, you know, they uh, have certainly had an impressive record in these first hundred days in terms of getting people vaccinated, we know that that, that has not been equitable from a racial standpoint. And, and, and you know, as much uh, for as much as people make about the vaccine hesitancy issue in those communities of color, access was such a huge uh, piece of the equation. Setting up, uh, for example, these huge uh, FEMA uh, sites, uh, you know, w w without necessarily access to, to transportation, for example, helping people to get to them. And we know that so many of these frontline workers, these essential workers, right, are people who don't uh, necessarily have the means to take the day off to get a vaccine much less the second uh, dose of the vaccine. We know a lot of people have pretty bad side effects, you know, uh, in, in the wake of taking that second vaccine. If they have to call in sick, they're not gonna get paid uh, when, when they do that. And, and so when somebody knows that, uh, that, that certainly is something that is uh, stalling uh, certain parts of the population from coming back to get the second vaccine, right? And so uh, the, the J&J &J pause, we don't know what effect that had. Uh, especially in communities of color, uh, you know, who could have gotten maybe one dose and, and wouldn't have to worry about coming back uh, for that second dose, maybe that taking more time away from work, more time away uh, from, from the child care piece. And so, uh, you know, I think that, that the trusted messengers uh, that are certainly being deployed in a lot of communities of color, uh, those folks may be getting more people uh, to get the vaccine, but still uh, issues of access are not just about having a facility in, in that community. It is about making it uh, possible and, and viable for folks uh, to, to, to get the vaccine uh, in a way that they're not kind of balancing uh, their uh, economic survival, for example, with uh, their public health. Yeah, yeah. All such important issues. Um, before we go, we had major immigration news this week. The Biden administration carried out some of its first reunifications of families separated at the southern border under former President Trump. Weijia, these are such emotional scenes. These are such um, really scenes that tug at your heartstrings. I, I wonder, though, as you as you watch them, what other challenges on immigration um, really are at at, at the part um, where the Biden administration is having to to really. Ch face these challenges? What are the other immigration challenges? Well, for one, we saw four families reunited this week, which is so substantial still, because you think about those images that you talked about and how powerful they are and how long these families have been waiting for this moment. But there are hundreds of other families that still need to be reunited. So the task force is working on that. They're trying to do it as quickly as possible. But there's also this issue of young migrants that are still coming to the border every day. There was huge news yesterday that, um, um, they're being processed faster. So they're not being held in those, um, you know, border facilities that were not set up for children as long. Um, they're going to other ones that are run by Health and Human Services that are a lot more humane for kids. So that is a success. But the root of the problem is still there. And they continue to come. So they have to communicate and try to get to the source of that. And also, um, I think the issue of the refugee cap will, will continue to be one because even the president said, he, even though he's raised the cap mm -hmm. to 62,500 from the historic low of 15,000, mm -hmm. he doesn't believe that they're going to get there this year. So um, that number is still lower than what he wants it to be. And that's, you know, a pledge that he wants to fulfill because he made it while he was still a candidate.